with the tiger nest. Which is one of my dreams to go there. Well, it's a, it's a figure of Felma Sambaba. I shoot it this in a, in a museum. Just to start, um, first, I want to say this is the first time I do this lecture, so it's, uh, it's a new uh, field for me, and uh, I w I'm very happy to, uh, to elaborate on that, especially with uh, some uh, Buddhist and non-Buddhist uh, people, but at least Asian people in the room. Ah, Bangladesh delegation. Well, everyone knows that, enfin, I made two slides to, uh, to, to frame. Uh, you may know that Buddha is a, you know that in Sanskrit, the enlightened one. Uh, I just want to say that, uh, because the, the Westerners don't know this, so I just put for me to structure Siddhartha Gautama, Sakyamuni, and the Buddha is the same three names for the same person. This person was a real person, exactly like Jesus Christ and Mohammed. So they are a real person and they transform themselves to create a new religion. Uh, of course, uh, in, uh, he was uh, in northern India, in Bihar, like we are here, and uh, present day Nepal with a Lumbini. You know this, everyone, but it's for me to, to, go, to go on. Uh, you know the, ba the, basic, the basic principle, the, for the fourth number truth, uh, from the endless movement of the passion to extinction of the passion, the four truths, it has been labeled in Europe at, at nihilism, which is, which is not. So condition, condition existence, where all our uh, actions have a result uh, in the future. Suffering exists because there are causes that lead to its appearance. Uh, the third noble truth concerns the cessation of extension of suffering. So we try to, instead to, to fight against this suffering, we try to, we try to, uh, to erase it. And the fourth noble truth is a path leading to the cessation of suffering and then to be enlightened. Okay, so, uh, Buddha succeeds, some Bodhisattva succeeds. If we try, we may take several lives. Exactly, and what is quite in interesting here is that uh, the uh, Buddhism and Hinduism are very, very intertwined because uh, exactly like uh, Judaism and Christianism, one religion inspires the other one. So it's very interesting. And the Westerners don't know that. They don't know how, how much the, the, uh, the Buddhism has imported notions from, from Hinduism. The gods and all the worshiping and all that stuff. I'm not a specialist but I'm hardly working on that since uh, two years. So uh, here is a map. It's quite good for, for, for global knowledge. It starts, from, uh, it starts from here, and then it moves towards your region in Southeast Asia with the first uh, uh, step by uh, Sri Lanka. That's why we have the oldest uh, uh, text and the oldest uh, worshiping element like the teeth in, in Kandy here. And it goes here also, and in, uh, it's called now present-day Pakistan, uh, with the Gandhara heart. And, this, then, and then, then it, uh, it was, let's, let's say, expelled from India, broadly speaking, to move here, and then to move in the, in the Tibetan plateau, and then to move until Japan. So you know this by heart, and, uh, but it's uh, a way to, uh, uh, to remind us uh, where uh, these religions come from. And it's quite interesting, it's a similar pro process than the Christianism. Christianism was expelled from uh, the Middle East and moved through uh, uh, the North as a orthodoxy and the West as a Christianism. Similar process, similar figure, it's quite interesting. Well, uh, there is uh, three branches of Buddhism, as far as I know. If you say some mistakes, please uh, point it out. Theravada in the Southeast Asia. I, and I've heard that Inayana is not a positive term, and I've heard that Theravada is more e uh, exact. Is that right? Okay. And Mahayana, uh, China, Japan, Vietnam, and Korea. The, no, the Thailand guy is not there. And Vajrayana, uh, Tibet, and Mongolia. This is, uh, you know this by heart, if you may, everyone knows, maybe you, you too, okay? Okay, so we have a, a good knowledge. 
And uh, of course, for the Westerners, this image is very popular because it makes very good images and very good photos. Sorry for that. It's Instagramable. Instagramable. And, but the most uh, 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 visible in, in, in the West is Tibetan Buddhism and only Zen from Japan. It could be the same in your country. It could be the same. And Theravada is very discreet. And for example, we have a huge uh, uh, community of Cam Cam Cambodian in France, but we never saw this temple, we never saw in them in the streets. Oh yeah? So Theravada is something that is called as Kabirvada. Yeah. And you have in Thailand Theravada. So Sri Lanka does not have a field of this Theravada. They are both Theravada. Yes. May I use your paint? Yes. Huh? Yeah. So I should, I should write here in Ayana. Yes, yeah, there is no discussion on that one, but there is discussion on that term, and I'm not sure enough. So many people inappropriately use it. Because when the Westerners discover uh, uh, Buddhism in the 16th and 17th century, they have some uh, um, uh, uh, préjugés, yeah. preconceptions, preconceptions, Pre preconceptions, and about the. the the, the emptiness of the Buddhism. Because he said, my, my life will be empty. So it will be empty. If I'm empty box, I am nothing. And then we, it's a combination with a niche, yeah. with nihilism. Yeah. Well, this is a short introduction. Let's go now, story for meaning. As I say to my colleague uh, this morning, uh, the next slides are totally um, uh, new because uh, it's my latest research I am doing on stories and on narrative and that is my latest research that I've written in a book and I uh, has to be published now so this slide are very very uh, recent but it reflects um, some element of our society whatever is your is our society it could be mine it could be yours it could be yours all the society are things uh, 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 touched by this movement. What is meaning? Insight into our society. So it's a, a little bit of uh, uh, philosophy. First, there is a sense of loss of meaning. Where is the meaning? Where are we going there? Uh, where are we going together? Where I am going alone? What can I do as a student from Bhutan or from Sri Lanka? The problem of meaning because first, information makes the world unreadable. In other words, too much information. On, on, about what? Because of this. Only this. I don't blame this tool, but every, every information is everywhere. If I want to have some documentation on Bhutan or some information about the media in Bangladesh, it takes me 10 minutes. If I need some more detail, someone from the country. But we have a, everyone says, where are we going to? It was easier before without being uh, 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 without being uh, too much uh, uh, stuck to the past. Individualism versus individualization, the erosion of traditional social sociability. European society, at least, Western society are, are uh, very um, um, uh, um, under the pressure of being being yourself the the motto is be yourself be what you want to be and even some advertisement are doing this be what you sh you have full of potential so be yourself don't compare to your neighbor or compete with your neighbor so i'm sure advertisements reflect the similar actions and shall I do myself only with my social media, or shall I give up some um, individualism to make society? 
the, the Western, the, the European society, all of society, and I'm sure some of uh, most of them here, except very um, uh, 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 authoritarian society like China. China, you are not allowed to be yourself. You are not allowed to develop your own path because of different rules. Well, you've, we've got this and a feeling of power, powerlessness. Globalization is causing Western and Eastern right, society to lose their grip. What, are, what, what, what can I do? Uh, is the power uh, uh, in charge of my interest? Uh, are the politicians doing their job? Are they clean? Are they not clean? Is my country stable? Uh, is a foreign interference in my country for elections? Are the elections fair? And all these problems. Globalization creates a, a lot of, uh, 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 let's say, uh, not instability, but a lot of uncertainty. And moreover, moreover, you will see my, my link with Buddhism later, but moreover, happy, glo happy globalization is over since then. There was a moment since from 2000, from 2000 to 2015 or 2016, what was the major fact in 2016 at the world level, not in Bangladesh or in Sri Lanka? What was the major fact in 2016? 2016, six years ago. What was the major point when there was something which touch all the society all over the world. No? We don't know. The election of Donald Trump. Of Donald Trump. And uh, this guy says globalization is over. But he was reflecting a certain uh, trend. So if there was, uh, for 20 years, happy globalization. So everywhere will be uh, happy with uh, globalization, even India and uh, textile for Bangladesh and, uh, uh, I don't know, speciality for, uh, for Argentina. And then it's over. There is no more happy globalization. The researchers said fragmentations. The world is fragmented. It's not so well connected. And then sometimes country are, uh, have, uh, has to, to choose sides. India refused to choose sides, for example. Why not? It's a strategy also. And uh, next slide. Storytelling and epic. So we move from a communication society where it was uh, a general framework to communicate with uh, uh, writers doing books, painters doing paintings, and uh, scholars doing research to a world where we try to influence. I'm not trying to influence you because I am, maybe I'm a scholar from an old school. <laughs> maybe I'm an old school scholar. But I see now that uh, we were discussing on that yesterday. Huh? Some thinker say, okay, I want, to, I want to fight climate change. I am a writer. I want to fight climate change. So I, so I make a book into that purpose. Yeah. So is he a writer or an activist? activist. We don't know. Activist in the way of writer. Yeah, but well done, well said. Activist with a way of writer. I am a painter or I am, a, I am a, an activist? Of course. Uh, 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 a painter and uh, uh, and uh, artist are always always have been some political dimension, but they keep within their line. I know they're blurring the line, and I don't. I'm sure that in t Indian TV, but I'm on the French TV, there is it every. I'm 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 very I'm watch uh, a television every. Uh, it's a small uh, documentary of no, it's a small talk show, or 30 minutes every week every day. And each day there is for 10 minutes a new, uh, a new um, protagonist. And the young generation, the, the, the people which are around 30 to 40, they are exactly, oh, I have made a book, then I will make a, 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 a play, 
Then I will make a movie, and I'm, f and I'm still always on all that direction. I am fighting against <coughs> this or for this. It's particularly clear for two topics. Um, uh, how do you say? Uh, climate change, and the second one, uh, uh, not, not even gender, violence uh, against women. It's incredibly intense on that. They are the most active. But they may, they may be active also on the saving the, the new uh, uh, butterfly from Bihar. If you want to do that, you can choose a very narrow cause. So that's why people try to influence then the, the point of view and also, which is more political, states try to influence us. As we say yesterday from public diplomacy, but there is also another level, but I, won't, don't, I, won't, I will not go into that. So this is a theoretical point, influence with its possibility of polarization changes the balance of the terms of communication. Now can actors organize, exactly what I, we are saying, actors can organize their remark in order to promote doubt, in that case it's scientific angle, or polarization, in that case it's a political angle. So the debate about uh, COVID-19, Polarization about scientific science, and of course, polarization in case of elections. It's very, very clear now, not in all, every country, but in most countries, there is always one or two candidates which can create a party and use or try to use polarization. You understand, with all these factors, it's difficult to have a clear view of what's happening. It's quite difficult. And we have to face the reality. Here or in France, students, parents, and civil servants, everyone should face the reality. Sometimes to size, sometimes keep its own ethic in order to, uh, to uh, not to jump in into that direction. If you want, you are free. Alors, I like this one because it's, it's for, I like this one because it's uh, in search of meaning. It's another dimension of research of meaning. After a decline for the grand narratives, religion, at least in a secular world like the Westerners, liberalism, who believe really in liberalism actually, with uh, and socialism and totalitarianism, which exists during the 20th century, fragmentation leaves individuals to fend for themselves according to the fragmented currents existing in the 21st century. And this researcher, Le Grand Récit, huh, says, now, you, you agree with that, at least, uh, not in Bhutan, because the religion is a national uh, element, and maybe in Bangladesh, I don't know about Islam. But at least in, a, in secular countries, religion is no more guiding us. Liberalism, liberalism is highly con contest contested because of the uh, uh, effect on the nature and the climate change. Socialism is highly contested because we don't see any, there is no more uh, uh, highly con contested too. And there was two totalitarianism during the 20th century fascism of uh, Russia and uh, uh, fascism of uh, Germany, and we have, we, we have seen the result. So there is nothing more to guide us. The problem of communication, the problem of fragmentation of the world, and the problem of uh, uh, what are the narratives. Because when you vote, when we vote, we, we choose a party, we tell us a story. Life will be better for you, will be better because of blah, blah, blah. Uh, you choose Javier Millet in, in Spain, in uh, Argentina, because he was saying, I will throw everything outside and we will, we, we will create another world. And he win at 55%. And how many percent of the young ones vote for him? I think it was high. Uh, very high. So 
You know, there was a very uh, ultra liberal in, in, uh, in Argentina two months ago or four months ago. And the young ones vote for him because, they, okay, my country has no hope, so I want for something which very radicalistic, someone which is very radicalistic. It's another system in India where uh, Prime Minister Modi is here. He's telling a story since uh, uh, 14. 14 years. Huh? 2014, okay. so 10 years, he will be re-elected uh, certainly yeah. next term in this year. So he's telling a story, the same story since uh, this, um, this period. And I didn't know what she, Sheikh Asina was expe expe ex ex explaining during the election in January, but I've heard some debates. Okay, so this, uh, this uh, French researcher proposed he, um, Illimitness. There is a problem with the e, la. illimitness. We, a, a world without limi limitation. It's, it's also called transhumanism. You know this? Yeah. You know that? And who is the most famous guy on this direction, on this dimension? Is from U.S. Yes. Yeah. From U.S. Who is this guy from the U.S.? You know him, of course. Let's see, let's see. The friend of Modi? Yeah. This man, Elon Musk, say, with technology, we create a new, uh, a new human. And we, 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 will, we will colonize uh, Mars, Mars in, in, a, in, a, in, f in some years. And you know, he has, he has a, the name. Have you, have you read the name of his children? Yes, something is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And this guy is pro-Trump, yeah. which is illiberalism when you try to reduce all the support of the states. He retweet Millet now. Same, same pattern. So illiberalism. Uh, illiberalism is known in, at least in Hungary when you undermine slowly the democracy, democratic system. It's a way to tell a story. Alors, there is another researcher, you know Timothy Snyder? Uh, Professor Sushant? Yes. Do you know Timothy Snyder? Timothy Snyder. Okay. Timothy Snyder is an American risk scholar, and he say, he give me a new idea when the past is always reinvented. There is no future. The, I mean, political party doesn't propose you a future. They propose you to live in an eternal past. Like yeah, yeah, circular. Uh, Russia is the sa exactly the same. He never speaks about the future. He speaks about the great patriotic war since years. So he is, he is stuck in the future. Illiberalism. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Trump is that way. Uh, uh, something which is a golden past. We say that in English, a golden past, golden era. Yeah. Then messianism. Yeah. Um, some yeah, I'm a messiah. A messiah. So I will be a new, I will be a new messiah to guide you, but you have to be under my control because a messiah has some power. I like this one, declinism. I, I don't have, I don't know if you have this category in your country. In French, we have this category. There is a one fourth or one fifth percent of the thinkers who say we are in decline, uh, yeah. and they are reading this since I am born. You know, we are in decline. We are declining. We are in decline. And this is a kind of very negative loop, and also it's a kind of it golden look for golden. We also have the only sense that we like to be D E, not D I but D E. Ah, yeah. I wasn't sure with my uh, yeah. Nota? In the Indian electoral system, and Nota is called Nota. I will not choose anyone. So if you have four people to choose, you have the fifth option that you don't choose anyone. None of the vote. Ah, none of the vote, Nota. Yeah, it's good also declinism because I, I won't, I don't want, there is nothing which is nothing which is capable to attract me. I don't. I'm not speaking about politics. I'm speaking about the stories and the values the politicians are explaining to us. Yes. Huh? Yes. 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 
Because to, make, to win a campaign, you have to propose a text. You have to propose a, a story, or at least some values behind that. Veganism is very much in India. Every really? Yes, they will tell you that uh, all the politicians are bad, they have no choice what to do. It's yeah? Politics. Sometimes it leads to populism. But I, I, don't, I don't know there is a, 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 I didn't know there was some populism in, in India with populist leaders that I don't know. And the last one, the last one which is quite important, jihadism. Yeah, it's, quite, it's quite incredible to, to read that. But it has been proved that the, the Westerners which were engaging themselves into jihadism uh, were, uh, 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 were um, attracted by the story proposed by, by, by jihad. It has been food for that. It is quite incredible. You, you know, the, the highest proportion, I'm not proud about that, the highest proportion of uh, jihad by percentage of population in Europe is Belgium. Belgium. Yeah. Where, where do you live? Where I live? Yeah. Is, is this jihad like religious huh? or any form? Like, no? What? No, no, no. It's religi uh, religious political movement. It's okay. uh, yeah, many movements in Indonesia yeah. and it's in Southeast Asia. Yeah. No, I, 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 yeah. It's like, like transnational movement. Yeah. For example, like uh, Jamaah Islamia from Pakistan. Yeah. yeah. Or, uh, you have, you have one in Indonesia too. Yeah, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is one too. Yeah. So each multi, uh, most, almost I don't know, but almost um, Muslim country have a far right movement which is do, is promoting jihad, and they, they have uh, different names, but they are inter intertwined. Yes, yeah. it's in the local, and it also what is it that uh, links with the global movement. Yes, it's in Assay. It's in Assay, no? Yeah. Oh. Okay. okay, so and, uh, and so these young ones, mostly they are very young, except the, uh, the, the leaders, but these young ones from these countries and from Europe are yeah. saying, okay, this world, I don't like this world, too much uh, right for freedom. Yeah for women, too much communication, I will go into that and I will, I will find a family. I will find a family, which is, makes sense too. Which makes sense, huh? Because everyone, everyone, each of us, including all of us here, and including the people which will be watch this, uh, this video, say, I want to belong to a group. I, I like I, I want to have a family and I want to belong to a group and I, I try that my, I try my best to have a sense of uh, comprehension of the world, which is proposed by education system and proposed by religion or proposed by uh, market. So th this is quite interesting. So you get it by your contribution and your contribution. Uh, that's that's a good uh, it's a good uh, uh, place to teach. Uh, I we finished at four thirty. Okay. So now. We move to Buddhism to uh, not to find a solution because it will be um, too much, uh, too much, uh, um, uh, how do you say? I, I don't find even the word in English, <laughs> in French. Ce serait trop, comment dit? Oui, it will be too much simplistic. Yeah. Uh, if I say Buddhism as a story for everything, it's, a, it's, it's totalitarian also. But at least I explore with you, in front of you, thanks to my friend and to my colleague, uh, the idea of can we use Buddhism, can, can, can Buddhism a way to give more sense to a certain number of people? So I have divided my, uh, uh, my work into three parts. First one, can we have a narrative? Second one, can we have cultural relations? And third one, 
may be sensitive, can we have political dimensions? And I wait contribution for you on each line. <laughs> because I know that you gave me, so I was uh, dreaming of my, uh, before sleeping, I was dreaming of my work. And I say, okay, I will have some feedback which will improve this content. First, but I have one example. India has chosen to give some meaning, not Buddhism, but I find the closest element, I've found yoga, International Day of Yoga, 21 of June. What is that? It's no more Buddhism. Okay, I know. But it's a way to give sense. Uh, it's called soft power, soft power of India. But it's also a way to give sense to what we are looking for, to what we have discussed already. Let's do some yoga to find peace or to find some balance and blah, 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 and that stuff. You know, it was promoted by the Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi. In the US, huh? And uh, uh, he succeeded. He, it was registered at the UNESCO, and all the 21 of June, it's done, uh, not everywhere in the world, but at least in, in Belgium. You can go to an event, it's a free outside, and you can do some yoga. And then you say, ah, I'm connected with the soft power of India. It works, it works. So I, I take this example in purpose. Huh? Yeah, very. Not like Buddhism do not have yoga, but they take up principle of yoga in a different way. Yeah, it could, it could be international relations, my friend. Yeah, very. Uh, yeah, very, uh, uh, very uh, clever uh, uh, comments. That is true. Hello. Some words about yoga. I, I'm practicing yoga since maybe 15 years. I was looking for a club next, next door because I don't drive for hours to that. It was easy to find, but not so easy. Now, in Brussels, yoga class every kilometer. Every kilometer around my house, there is maybe five or six classes within 15 minutes walk. Boom! Like this. Incredible. And I asked to my students, who is practicing yoga? And some ladies say, oh, yes, very shy. <laughs> because it's mostly for young women around 25 to 40. And if I go to yoga, I'm the, I'm the oldest one. First I am a man, then I am the oldest one. But I do my yoga. So you are right. In the West, at least, and I'm sure in the US, and I'm sure maybe here there is yoga classes. There was something here at the, day, at the gate. And of course, in city, when the there is yoga classes for uh, urban people. So it has a, it, it has a boom. It's, it was, it's now booming. And of course, of booming, you know, there is two consequences. Fragmentations, so different style, like the Bikram. <laughs> we are in the right place to be Bikram Yona. You know Bikram Yoga? It's very hot. It's 30 degrees, 35 degrees to sweat like this. <laughs> yeah, it came from the US. And it's a red stud, blah, blah. And it goes like this. Uh, <laughs> and of course, it became more market. You're right. You're totally right. That's a, all the discussion about soft power. Is it, it, does it remain as an original product, or does it, does it transform into a market? OK, but uh, it's always uh, good to discuss about that. So, and then I make a connection, like, not uh, as an epic, but at least as some content. What is that? Rishikesh. Rishikesh. Who went to Rishikesh? I have seen, but I have been. Oh. Voilà. It's a, a self proclaimed state, a self-proclaimed city of world capital of yoga. What does it make into the mind of the Westerners? Huh? It starts with that. It starts with that. But it starts with that and then another very famous Swami, I don't remember. Maybe. Uh, but in the mindset of the Westerners, yoga, India, Rishikesh. That's it? So 
And maybe also in, in it's a Spain in, in, in Argentina. So what do I say? I say it's already a way. Huh? It's a kind of narrative, or it could be used by the government. And why not? Because it brings tourists. So it's not really a narrative, but uh, this story uh, starts with a it's, a, it's a part of the, it's part of the history which became a story. Okay? Yes? No? Good. Well, and then epic for tourism. Okay. It's not so. And I, and I choose, then I move uh, to Buddhism, and I say, okay, you, have, you find, now, I move, uh, uh, I, you find a lot of uh, travel agency dedicated to Westerners or to non-Westerners to go on the footsteps, uh, uh, on the footpath, how do we say, on the footpath of Buddhism. Bhutan don't do that because of other, uh, other elements. But of course, here it's a print screen of uh, one travel agency, and uh, you've got a lot of packages, and you go, blah, you, you follow, the, the, and you've got a similar uh, program in Sri Lanka by tra travel agencies. So here it's a kind of, it's a mix between soft power, epic, and tourism. Okay. And of course, if you go on that, if someone goes there, he may be more, he will be more sensible. He's the only, there is three Indians here in that room, but all of us now, because we are living in India, we are more aware of the reality of India, not the whole country. So if you, if so everyone which is going there with a, a kind of motivation, is more aware, aware of, the, of, the city, of the reality of the country, even if it's remained tourism, even if it's remained into a, into a bubble, which is a, a I go from, <laughs> I go outside, hop, I jump in the bus, I stop on the spot, hop, I jump in the bus, and I don't see, all, I see only uh, very interesting spots. But at least you see some realities. Here as a, as a map, uh, of uh, the eight great Buddhist pilgrimage sites, so we are not we are uh, we are here here. Vote to speak. We are here. I went there this morning. <laughs> we are here. Did you went to uh, vote to speak? Yeah. Good. And you have to. Did you went to Bodh Gaya? It was organized or it was free? No, because the non, for the non-Indians. You went? Long time ago? Yeah, but you, you, you came, you, you, you take the opportunity while being student here or it was before? Okay. So, we go now into a more, uh, uh, a little bit more technical element. Have you heard about the UNESCO Intangible Heritage List, ECH? Who has heard about that? So everyone knows about the UNESCO Heritage. So what is the UNESCO Heritage in Sri Lanka? Sigiri. 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 Yeah, Sigiri. Absolutely. What is the UNESCO Heritage in uh, Indonesia? Buddha Buddha. What is the uh, UNESCO heritage in, uh, in Bangladesh? Uh, many, uh, there is also, uh, Buddhist, uh, voilà. Each country are at min minimum five heritage, which is tangible. But there is a very there is a list which is less known, which is intangible. So this this is tangible. Bodh Gaya and. Uh, so this is the place you mentioned. But there is an intangible list, which is the practice, representation, expression, knowledge, skills, as well as the instrument, object, artifact, artifacts, and cultural spaces associated with a group, community, in some cases, individual. And the, you find oral traditions, you find uh, 
uh, uh, performing arts, like dances. You find social practices as rituals. You find knowledge and practicing concerning of nature and the universe. And you find traditional craftsmanship. But how do it go? Your country, each country can, every year, can propose something. So there is a, a vote, and now it becomes more, since five years, it, it becomes highly political. Before it was uh, less political. <laughs> and um, uh, uh, there is a vote. So we, we have, we know, all of us, we know the tangible heritage, and 99% of us didn't, don't know what are the intangible heritage. So I give you here an example. Lipizan horse breeding traditions. So it was uh, inscribed in 2022 by a list of countries. Austria, Bosnia, Croatia, Hungary, Italy, Romania, Slovakia, and Slovenia. So uh, uh, they, they, they propose something which is, oh, we have a tradition for horse breeding. No one knows about it. No one. Because of what? And we will see that later. So mostly, you see, Central European countries. Because Lipizan is a, um, a race. You saw that? Uh, a type of horse which is uh, originated from that area. So this is inscribed on the intangible original list. So it may remain like this, in a box, <laughs> in a file somewhere in a computer, uh, or somewhere in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. <laughs> but it can be used to tell a story. This is a trick. It can be used to tell a story. How? So we will see now, oh, if you browse on your website to, to see what, what your country has, you will find a description, you will find a video, always the same patterns, and in different languages of UNESCO. So Buddhism, I, I, made, a, I made a search about tradi traditional Buddhism, not Bodhgaya, not Budubudu, because I have to take the plane to go there, or uh, see the Gireli, or Kandy, is also called UNESCO Kandy. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, I, I've, learned, I've looked for intangible heritage of humanity focusing on Buddhism. I have found two for India. You know, no, it is Bangladesh. Bold songs. Who knows about that? Did you know that? From your home country that it was inscribed? Okay, but she's from Bangladesh. But I never... She sings about yeah. Oh. Really? <laughs> yes. It was like my last semester, last semester of the seminar of the What? It was my seminar topic. I'm lucky. <laughs> oh, she's lucky. But who knows that in Europe? No one, you know? Hello. Maybe. So very, very little people. Hello. Yeah. So music, musicologist? Musicologist. Very, very narrow target. There is also some example because in, 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 in France we have a special um, uh, collection dedicated to traditional music from all over the world. And there was a CD, some CDs about bold songs. But it's, big, it's not a big target. What could we to tell, what can we do to tell a story? Or what the country, as, as such a case Bangladesh, can promote bold songs outside Bangladesh? And one terrible success uh, in, coming from your country uh, from Spain and from your country. From your country is tango. And from Spain is uh, uh, flamenca. So this music are famous all over the world. So it's a kind of, let's say, 
narrative values of power which can be promoted outside without taking the plane to visit Borobudur. You see the difference. On one side I have to take the plane or the train, it's, it's less ecological, and the other side I, have, I can receive it at home. At least if I live in a big, big city. I will not find a flamenco, flamenco, flamenco in rush gear, and I will not find a bold songs in uh, Cholet. <laughs> okay? So, it can be promoted by MFA to tell some stories about the country which has made that on that list. Is this Buddhism? with the value connected with Buddhism. Peace, benevolence, love and kindness, and blah, blah. Enfin, blah, blah. You see what I mean? I have another example. India, chanting uh, a text from uh, a trans Ladakh region, Jammu and Kashmir, India. This is inscribed by India on the HICH. It could be used by the Ministry of India to, promote, to be promoted outside. Alors, not saying uh, uh, by India with Ladakh, because it's too uh, harsh, as we, say, as we discussed yesterday. But if there is, a, let's say, a famous band, I don't know one, or famous group of monks and nuns, they may be supported by the Indian government to make a tour somewhere. Then it becomes resources. Then it, it, uh, it, it gives a more uh, detailed image of, of this country, in that case, India. You get it? Can you go? Because even huh? in India, I don't think it's that much famous. And because it's... Uh, can it be... I think India is more like, uh, you know, they, they, they try to uh, present Which are in the verge of uh, extinction. They don't promote those things which are exuberant. I don't know. No, no, no. This is living. This is living, but on the verge of uh, extinction. Let, let, let's. let's, let's okay. First, it is an intangible heritage, not necessarily in the other list, but to say the other list, that on the verge of extinction. That's another list. But these are simply intangible heritage. No, yeah, 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 you're right. It's not, it's not on the extinction. I give you an idea. Let's say there is a famous, there is a, um, a in a, near uh, um, Dharamsala, there is a famous temple called Gyuto. You know this? Gyuto is famous for the quality of its chant. It could be decided by the government not to, to promote this in India, but where the audience is, which means Europe or the U.S., because there is a many Westerners in the U.S. and in Europe which likes Buddhism, and especially Tibetan Buddhism. So in that case, you take a, uh, the embassy of... Uh, let's make a case live. <laughs> you make a case live. You take France, the Indian uh, council, con cultural advisor lists all the temples, lists all the theater connected with uh, an audience, then they support the tour. And then it moves, not from here, it moves from here, they say, to my home. It's not a dying tradition. It's not for um, uh, maybe um, Croatian, uh, Croatian, there is no audience, so we skip Croatia, but we focus on, let's say, Germany and France. And in that case, the government can say, can target small audiences, like the, the, the Westerners motivated by Buddhism, which will come here. And they are oh, okay. Buddhism is still vibrant in, in India. Oh, maybe I will go to India. 
and it's no more uh, 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 um, and then it creates a more balanced image of uh, the image of, of uh, India is quite balanced but it's not only Hinduism it's also ah, oh, Tibetan Buddhism is still living there so it could be it could be I don't say it should be never I will not say it should be but it could be used like this and because of that without going into the direction of influence but at least it's promoting the value of Buddhism the content of Buddhism you understand? Yeah, we are not talking about marketing, which is another dimension. But here we are talking about possibility of potential, exactly. And the ideas which define your identity, which can be used to define us versus them. Uh, this, this is a process. It it, def it defines your identity. It's, it's Indian, so it defines your identity. So it also helps to define the identity of Indian citizens living here. Exactly the same. F f we take, take a French band, and you say, "Oh, but it's French, so it's also part of my identity." Huh? So we g we are slowly going into cult culture, but we are focusing on that day on Buddhism to create ideas. Why India is not doing that? I don't know, but it's not my. I'm not. I'm not the diplomatic advisor of the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I would like to. I would love to, but I'm not. This is my reality. That's okay. So we were we were on on the number two. Uh, we were first on tourism, Buddhism, uh, epic. Uh, uh, we were first on uh, narrative and epic with the, uh, 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 the entry of tourism, which is classical. We are, we were on second one. We were on the intangible heritage list. Is ICH as promoting outside, not taking the flight to come into your country. And then it's possible because each country in that room, another, uh, we have to discuss evaluation of the students. Uh, uh, each country in that room has something on the list of intangible cultural heritage. You know, I've been working my students on. So, what was it? Ah, yeah, it was a special so uh, type, uh, type of song from Kazakhstan. You know Kazakhstan, steps, yeah. horses, yeah. yota, and flat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, they, were, they, ha they asked them to, uh, can you propose, a, you have to make an assignment. There is this type of dance. Uh, can you, what is your proposition to promote it abroad? As it takes the inspiration of, of, uh, of uh, I point of view, because of, of tango and, uh, and uh, salsa. It, it takes the inspiration of Latin dances. They say, okay, we will promote tours of, uh, we, will f we will train some um, uh, teachers, then we organize tour of this teacher, and then this slowly, within five or ten years, this type of dance can be, uh, uh, become a part of uh, of the popular pop culture act as K-pop is and as tango is. Exactly like this. Okay, we go into the process of marketization. We may lose of some authenticity. No problem about that. But it's another topic. We are not here in a marketing school. <laughs> not in a business school. We discuss about this possibility. 
Okay. Well, the third one. Uh, the third one is Buddhism and politics in Asia. So this is, um, um, uh, I have to improve it uh, a little bit more, and I hope with the discussion we'll go on. Uh, why do I list this four here and not, the f not India? This is a question to the students. Here there is four uh, 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 countries, there is no India. Why? Yeah, but uh, we are dealing now with uh, 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 Buddhism and politics. This is the first. Why? I didn't put India here, not to blame and shame India, uh -huh. but uh, for a particular reason. Because India has lost No. No. But I also make a small mistake because this is a, I want to uh, do an article on that point, uh, or at least a chapter in my next next book. Uh, but uh, these four countries have dedicated organizations to promote Buddhism outside. But uh, later I discover one which is also Indian. <laughs> And all these, all these four countries have, uh, 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 maybe there is one, because you give me the hint yesterday and I brought online the B, U, C. We will discuss about, you give me the, 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 the um, uh, next conference in 2024. Huh? No, but I, I brought online and discover, huh? Yeah, but there is a, some, there is a big organization behind. Well, I dis, uh, I'm doing some research, it's a live research, that uh, such countries may have also uh, uh, um, created, uh, let's say, a charity or an NGO or a global organization to, to promote their vision of Buddhism. Let's go into detail and please contribute. Of course, there is no member of China here, so... Sri Lanka, this is the official religion, is that right? Yeah. Thailand, it's a state religion, is that right? Myanmar, it's a key point of society, you cannot avoid uh, 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 Buddhism in, society in India. And China is one of the three religions under the control of the CCP. Okay, to frame it rapidly. And here, this is a World Buddhi Alliance of Buddhism, but international Buddhist organization, which is located... Um, huh? No, because this is a, the first global, it was in India, in Kalimpong. So there is, uh, I know, this is a work in progress, and then I have a political conclusion, but this is a work in progress where there is a different type of uh, charity uh, uh, like every religion, <laughs> the way, and the, the Christians, uh, no, the Catholics are doing the same as a, as a pyramidal manner, as always, but all the religions are doing the same, maybe not the, Christ, the Orthodox, but I don't know. All the religions have organizations who promote their, their point of view on their religion outside. And, of course, we cross the line with politics. And we are told, if, if we are crossing the line with politics, we can connect it with some narrative which is also used for citizens, giving sense, and stuff like that. Okay. okay. So, in India, I have found the Mahabodhi Society of India, which was founded in the, in the 18th century, 19th century in Bodh Gaya. And, uh, um, it was also, uh, I don't have uh, a lot of detail because I have to learn, to learn, a, lot, learn a lot about that. But uh, it was uh, founded by a whole Sri Lankan youth named Don David uh, Hewatawan. So this exists. Uh, I, 
we can go deeper and deeper, but at least it exists. I have discovered another element, the World Buddhist Council, which is made in Taiwan. So in that case, Taiwan wants to promote an alternative vision of Buddhism promoted by mainland China, as always. You see, behind that there is a, a different way of telling, 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 the, uh, uh, telling stories or promoting words, promoting issues. Uh, it's because Taiwan is not the same uh, uh, as mainland China. Well, I still have a lot, a lot, I have still a lot of elements. I, 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 it's too recent. It's too recent. The Mahabodhi society is not under the control of a government. Of course, uh, in Thailand maybe there is one. In Sri Lanka maybe there is one. It's always. Uh, 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 I was. Um, um, uh, 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 we may have some discussion and feedback about that. That how much the uh, uh, power and government and so, uh, the charity is closed. It, it, it should be discussed. Huh? But I've read a book about. I will quote the book and uh, uh, they read a book and uh, the. the the, the author has made a case study about Indonesia. And the case study shows that the um, uh, Islamic or Muslim uh, partners uh, from Indonesia move close to the power. And then the power decides to say to, 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 to frame itself as a, a modern Islamic country which is perceived like this in the West. So the, the, the movement for 20 years within one country, in that case, only Indonesia, shows that the, 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 they were far from, uh, from uh, 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 integrism or jihadism. They, they move closely to the power, and the government decide to promote itself as a real, re, re, reliable state with moderate uh, 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 Islam, uh, Islamism. Uh, so it shows the, uh, the, the link between uh, um, um, uh, uh, religion and, and power. And it shows also the perception of Indonesia. Everyone in, in Europe uh, has a positive image of Indonesia. We don't know nothing about the small uh, uh, fighting in Assay because it's too remote. Uh, but everyone has a positive image in Europe. So this is the result of the strategy of the government, the result of the behavior of the MFA, and also the way the societies manage together to promote its image. That's why uh, I always say, uh, if we take horses or bold songs, it's not, emo, it's, not eno, it's not enough for one country. It's too, too complicated. But the, the, complete, the, the whole image give us is a component of 1,000 pieces or 100 pieces or millions of pieces. And it results into a, which argument can be promoted by the country and what are the reception by the audience. So once again, to go back to your question, uh, I, I would like to, to browse for hours on all these uh, different institutions to know how close they are from. But I, I should go deeper into each country because sometimes it's not very easy to read. I'm not sure there is a lot of research on that, but that's another story. Is there uh, some uh, question over there from here? Um, I'm going slowly to the conclusion. Is that okay? Without any uh, break? Yes. It's okay? Okay. Um, so there is, a, uh, there, is, there is a possibility to look at each institution promoting Buddhism within each country and 
the, re the result abroad, exactly as the Indian in case I have discussed a few minutes ago. So to uh, finish with uh, uh, two last uh, slides, The God Share, it's a book, the translation of the, this book, La Part des Dieux, non pas, c'est pas le caprice des dieux, haha, but the God Share, c'est-à-dire um, um, how religion is considered at the worldwide level. It's a, it's a lady, which is French, she has written a book uh, uh, within political sciences, And she has uh, taken uh, Indonesia as a case studies, and she explained how the religion was considered at a world level. And we, I, I quote her because I find a connection between her research and my research, because we, we, we would finish by narrative. Alors, she says, first, the religious referent is first subjected to the logic of the state then become over-confessional, a narrative and an analysis of new global issues. So it's a framework of nation states, 19th century and 20th century, when the religion is, um, 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 is under, the nation, under the nation states. Frankly speaking, it's a situation in the whole Europe, even in Italy, The whole Europe is considered as secular. It means that religion is a free choice, an individual choice. You are free to practice what you want, but under the rules of the state. And it's more visible in France than in Italy, but it's a rule in the whole Europe. So there is no country in Italy, in, in Europe, where the, the religion is above the state. It doesn't exist, as far as I know. Maybe Malta, but I'm not a specialist of Malta. It allows a reference to a primordial identity, a form of register of individual and positive adherence. So it allows to, be, to belong to something. Before it was uh, like this, okay, I belong to a state, a nation state, I have my own religion, so it gives me some, some connection. But Religion seems to meet the condition for success in a paradoxic, so, par, paradoxical modernity that value both individualism and return to tradition. So she proposed to say, which is quite, so we have this movement, and then now, where it was, I am belong to a state, and religious is my own part, at least in the West. Of course, B Bhutan, for example, is different. Then he say, she says, It was coherent between a certain modernity. I am an individual, I am going back to tradition, so I feel connected without being lost like this. And it was a narrative used by government and religious actor. So religious actor were saying, oh, we belong to a state, we are a part, so the link says, okay, it's just, it gives us an identity. And to conclude, so at least in Europe, nation states were against the church. I don't like the, the word against, but at least. But she, she pointed out that post-independent state religions as a mean to access to sovereignty. That's very interesting. I didn't think about that as a Westerner. She, she quote Egypt, Iran, Pakistan, India. So the nation state became and then took religion as a, as a way to exist on themselves. And the most obvious case in that list is Iran and uh, uh, Pakistan. Because they reject the, 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 Western, the, the Western models and they say we are a religious state above all. To, 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 put, to, to say it bluntly. Huh? India is more ambiguous. But with uh, maybe uh, the, the actual government is using Hinduism to go back to that logic after years of years of uh, a certain type of model. So it goes like this too. But some states, uh, Iran is an incredible case. You know, Iran, we, when, you, when we see uh, some uh, 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 documentation, uh, uh, 
from the 60s, the, the, the ladies were very uh, totally free to move in the streets, were trying to, to reach modernity during the Shah, and then when the Shah collapsed and Alatoya uh, Khomeini uh, arrives, everything was, was changed. So of, co of course, here in that case, religious actors take a bigger part in the political process, unlike secular Europe. Of course, in, in Italy, you can do nothing without, uh, without, the concern, without the taking into account religion. Okay. Yeah. Because the Italians respect religion. And, and, Rome, is huh? Rome, is there. and because it's, because Rome is there. Like the Vatican. the Vatican is there, yeah. So, but it's uh, it's a uh, uh, in my rapid uh, uh, elements, uh, uh, it, it uh, takes more time to give more uh, details, uh, uh, comprehension of the different layers. But at least, religious narrative is a framework to explain to explain some complexity in the world. That's true. That's not totally true. And also to explain some conflicts. The never-ending conflict between Shia and Sunni, for example. Uh, it's a never-ending never conflict since the beginning. <laughs> and uh, religious discourses, including into the narrative, since able to substitute to the one on pacified international order. So very, very, when I read it, I said, okay, okay, this is very political sciences. Give me one second to, to compare, to, to write it. Because I like this, I like this way of, of seeing the world. You know, you, you of course, we, know, we all know that UN was created in 1945. Okay, under a Western US dominated world. Okay, I agree with you. But at least, what was the, the, the umbrella of the UN? Peace. Okay, we had two wars. At least we Europeans, we had two wars, that's enough. We create the European Union and uh, we support the UN uh, for having peace. So, rapidly speaking, it's a pacified international order with a different system of regulations, putting aside religion's dimension, because it's more a um, uh, secular point of view. It's a rational point of view. It's a form of enlightenment. Okay, it's westernized. No problem about that. But now in 2024, um, a lot of uh, actors are challenging the UN order. Who is the most challenging one? China, Russia. Russia and China. Okay. China. They say, broadly speaking, the UN, the UN order is not fair enough. We want, uh, uh, no. Russia doesn't want to change the system, but China wants to change the system within its value behind. Okay, you know that. I'm happy to hear the same element here in, in India than in my country. So they challenge, in a certain manner, they challenge the system of peace. And we see every day how Russia says uh, no to the r rules which are uh, 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 discussed at the UN. And they, one week ago they didn't sign, um, they refused to sign another treaty, to renew another treaty which controls nuclear weapons. So, huh? uh, some, some, uh, sub, uh, sub, uh, something. So now, that's why it's come again to narrative, really just uh, actors propose another point of view. on global order. Sorry. <laughs> uh, 
this is my, not my conclusion, but this is my contribution of today for the third part. So the first part is okay, and horses and bold horse songs. It's okay, it's very easy to grab. This is more a, a geopolitical dimension, but this is, uh, it's not done by China, because China says we are secular. Huh? But Russia, I show, maybe I can show you this clip at, for, to conclude. You say, they say uh, in the video, uh, orthodoxy, no cancel culture. I still remember the voice. So they challenge the value of, they challenge with religion, the value of, of the UN. Okay, this has some, this is too old, this should be renovated. I totally agree with that, but who is blocking? <laughs> who is blocking the changing at the UN Council? Huh? Russia and China and Brazil. They are blocking the, the, the changes which are sometimes promoted by France and, uh, and UK. So they are blocking the system. You know, this, we discussed to, to, to introduce Germany, to introduce Brazil, to introduce different actors. Uh, all the same players always say no. <laughs> so it's another topic. So, this is uh, the dominant discourse on political dimension, and the point is, but diversity of factors can hide the lack of coherence of the solution. In other words, there is uh, here thousands of different actors. Uh, let's say one actor for each brand of Buddhism, one actor for each brand of uh, Islamism, one actor for each brand of Christianity, and it's, all of them here have a solution. <laughs> but it doesn't make a, a global solution. So it doesn't make a new narrative to say, it, well, to conclude, if you are, uh, um, it's okay, see, uh, yeah, it's, it's five, five or two. To conclude, it doesn't give an answer to the, que to the question we start. I start with a question with a lot of meaning, with a lot of clear direction, with a confusion between globalization and formation and religion and and uh, uh, um, uh, 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 high competition markets and uh, and uh, K-pop uh, 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 pressure. So this this way, I'm totally convinced that okay, we can challenge a global order. I agree with that because we have to change uh, something new. But all these discourses doesn't propose uh, coherence. Exactly as a jihadism or uh, illimitism from Elon Musk doesn't propose a real coherence. It's too narrow for us for, to, to include the diversity and the different nations on, on here. You see? Okay, we, are going, we, are, we conclude with some uh, philosophical dimension. No problem about that. But at least you see the, uh, I hope this is, uh, if, except if you have a question, I hope that, enfin, I was working that Buddhism as narrative yes partly part, part, partly okay for tourism okay for inter international cultural heritage okay Three, maybe for a global order. Why not? Why not? But I never saw, I never saw, maybe uh, any initiative promoted by the, the, the group, the, the charity I mentioned from Sri Lanka, from Thailand, somewhere. I never saw a voice from such organization to say, we propose something at the global level. But maybe because I'm living in the West, but at least it doesn't come. I'm living in the European Union, so I'm most aware of that. that even if I'm reading a lot of all the countries I have visited and, and all the other ones. But I never saw something. So why Buddhism is not promoting an epic or a narrative or relying on this value to that? I don't know, but we, it's not important to have an answer for today. Maybe, if it, <laughs> maybe it's, your, it's your turn to find an answer later. <laughs> you will not become a writer or you will become a teacher, you will become a political scientist devoted to religion. <laughs>
Any question? Maybe because uh, Buddhism doesn't have this dimension of political. Uh, That's my intuition. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the Buddhism is not very uh, close to power, except in Myanmar. It's very kind of individual practice. Yeah. And by the practice, you are changing people, but it's not. Yeah. Really That's right. Okay. Yeah, Buddhism is it's quite more relying on the transformation of ourselves, of each individual, except in Myanmar, who is very close to power. And uh, they don't reach, they, try, they don't try to reach uh, the, the top. Uh, that's why it could be that, because of course, uh, uh, orthodoxy and uh, Catholicism have always been close to power, since the beginning, since the foundation. So that's, a, that's a, I, pre, I like this idea, and it explains why it's not vibrant like this at the global level, but it's like this. And, and you said that uh, you think if you think that Buddhism is going to go up somewhere, but in Buddhism there is no concept of power. You see? <laughs> that's right. So where will they go? <laughs> the problem is, yeah, it's yeah, not a problem. Yeah. It's a kind of idea. It's yeah. not even a problem. It's the solution at least. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's Yes, the, the problem, the problem is, I mean, not just the West, the whole world. The problem is they are looking at something to reach somewhere. Buddhism has nowhere, so they don't look at the, they don't have the problem. So why don't they search for the solution? That's that's a good and a good way to see the to see the questions. Yeah, thank you. It's very interesting. I mean, because like for example, Bhutan has, they have, a, they don't have GDP as I mean, they everyone look at GDP, but they have something else. Right? What is the, the happiness, happiness uh, growth index. Yes. But, uh, but they are also but they are <coughs> see the latest list. Yes, latest. That's what they I have gone that down. That 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 really. is because that is because of the influence. I mean, that will happen. The people then they will leave Buddhism, and then they will adopt the capitalistic way of life, and it will happen. But they are not Yeah. You see, it's the Sangha, the concept of Sangha is not there in any other uh, religion. That's right, right, that's right. There is nothing in Hinduism, there is nothing in... Uh, yes. Ashram is not Sangha. Ashram is not Sangha. Ashram is just a school. Sangha is the seed of Ashram. The same happens with, if you talk about Buddhism, what happens to Vaishnava? What happens to any sense of Shaivites? Exactly, exactly. there's a sect of Shaivites, sect of Shaivites. But there is a specifically ma mantra that Buddhism said on the Shami, Sangam said on the Shami, Sangam said on the Shami. But their actual behavior is the same. Yeah. The actual behavior is not that. No, because I have, I have lived among many Vaishnavites of different sects, but they don't Why? I don't get the question. In Kali, yeah. because most independence states, the region has the means to access to sovereignty. See, Pakistan is not post independence. It's 
foundation itself. Yeah. Iran, I can understand. Egypt, I can understand. India, okay, there is a resurgence in the recent times. They are talking about their Hindu identity. We are talking about. This. But Pakistan, its foundation itself is because of religion. Yes. Yes. Yeah, but in, in the 20th century. Yeah, I know, in 1947, but. Why do you contest post in, do you contest post independence? Yes, because it is not post independence. It defines itself, Pakistan. Yeah, do I agree with you, but it's a shortcut. Sorry. It's, yeah, it's it's a, it's a shortcut. No, Bangladesh is also not post independence. Initially, they are also. Uh, alors, first, uh, I, I, I uh, use the concept of this lady, Delphine Alès. Yes. Maybe it could be more, uh, more precise. But yes, we need to. And also, and, uh, could we place Ismail? Yeah. 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 Ye
I would like to argue, uh, uh, as I say in a few minutes ago, as uh, the combination between the claim of the very well organized uh, uh, Jew Jewish uh, associations through the world, plus uh, the guiltness of the Western powers which have uh, won the war to say, okay, we will support you. And of course, but, um, and, and it was a result, uh, and I've, but there is, uh, I, I've, as far as I know, but I'm not a specialist of that region, um, there is a, from the beginning there is an ambiguity and the creation of Israel between, be, be, between being a secular state and, be, 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 and between a, a religious state. And there is this very old ambiguity because all the claimers, if I am right, and if I say something wrong on the screen, please, I, I, want, to, I, I want to be uh, discarded. Uh, the, the claimers from, with the Western -like secular tradition, the Jewish claimer with the secular Western traditions were secular. The, in, in the, in, in the, mostly in the US, they were very well equipped and they were secular. So they claim for a secular state. And then later, which has been documented, so they created kibbutz, and later some very uh, religious Jews arrive, uh, maybe from uh, Central Europe and from South, uh, and from uh, 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 Africa. They arrive and they transform the state within a more religious state, oriented state. So there is an ambiguity at the beginning between being secular and being, being based on religion 100%. So I agree with you that this categorization is a little bit uh, uh, too narrow. Uh, it's a pleasure to discuss it. And maybe uh, I can uh, 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 propose another uh, name here, another kind of qualification. Yeah, as a country view. But uh, you're to but you're totally true. One of the uh, actual uh, uh, challenge is the climate change, uh -huh. or global warming, or whatever you call it. So there is a, a thousand of uh, actors in the world which are, which organize themselves through uh, networks and. Uh, online and uh, 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 lobbying groups and stuff, and they also propose a new narrative. Yeah, right. But there is a difference, time. Religions are, religions are here since 3,000 3, years minimum. <laughs> uh, climate uh, NGO fighting for that are here for since 20 years. I totally agree. There is a lot of research, sure, and I have a, I, yes? I think there's a real difference between climate change groups and religion is that religion gives something eternal. The ambition is eternal. Climate change is, well, but for secular once the climate change is, uh, you know, it, it is gained, then it's gone. It's, it's mm, uh, no, because, no, bec no, not so much, because there is a fear of being destroyed by climate change. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Once the climate change, you see, <laughs> Yeah, your argument is uh, debatable because between between limitation and non-limitation, uh, if we destroy the planet, there is no limitation. There is no nothing anymore.
uh, absolutely. And uh, some, some, uh, some very famous uh, uh, Buddhist thinker have made a book about climate change to take care of the planet. What is your opinion? But it's, it's a never-ending story because there is some some um, some uh, 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 environmental groups are eco now are called eco-terrorists because they are too straight. So they will say, "I oh, know, don't use this light, don't use this computer, <laughs> don't use this phone." <laughs> they want to suppress everything. propose like a, a conclusion. For example, to, to conclude on that, to one joke and one, uh, one information. In French, there is, thousand, uh, thousand, there is a lot of uh, uh, writers or think thinkers who say, why this narrative doesn't print? Why this narrative to fight against climate change doesn't function within the society? So th is that true? It doesn't function yet. Everyone is aware, everyone is anxious, Everyone say we should do something, but the system doesn't change. And to, f to frame it as a joke, I propose to come next year to make the same similar um, uh, presentation about a narrative and environment. <laughs> so thank you for your attention, and we we'll see us tomorrow for another topic. <laughs>